All right, let's get to the big story now. This morning, I host students from uh, Makerere Law Society. There's a couple of things going on there. The biggest one being that evening students are not being taught. And as a result of that, there's Solida. We used to call it Solida back in high school. It's playing out. So the day school students are saying we shall not be in class two. But that's the detail, which is um, what we'll talk about. But uh, the underlying issue here is hinged on the fact that the lecturers have not been incentivized. Back then, there was an agreement that uh, for them to teach evening students, they would be paid something extra because they have contracts of eight to five. And they go ahead and teach beyond five. And uh, they have met the end of the bargain. Management has not met the end of the bargain. What's the end in this? I don't know. Uh, let me get to my guests. We have with us Kansi Mukama Taremwa, guy with an interesting name. He's the president of Makerere Law Society. Now, that means president of law school, so to speak. Good morning. Good morning, Joel. How are you? I'm good. Thank Do you for inviting us for your show. We are glad that you're here. Do people call you Mr. President? Uh, oftentimes, yes. Mm. Yeah. Luckily for you, uh, now it is okay. Back in Amin's time, he <laughs> banned that word president. I don't know, president law society, president rotary. Uh, yeah. People want to be called chairman, chairperson, so... You're living I, in good times, I suppose. I guess so. Uh, maybe a few reservations, but <laughs> perhaps good times. <laughs> yeah. All right. We also have with us a guy with a nice name also. He's called Joel. Joel Roy Muchunguzi. He is a guild representative council, uh, counselor, representing uh, councillor. Yes. Okay. So what does that even mean? Well, you can be the council. It's the councillor <laughs> sitting on So the does council. that mean in the national politics understanding that mm -hmm. makes you an MP? Pretty much. An MP of law school? Yes, certainly. So you are my MP? Yes. I, I don't see you buying me soap and all these different <laughs> things. MPs pay school fees for their children. You've not contributed to my tuition and all these different things. But I believe you're one of the people that uh, run the advert that MPs shouldn't be doing that, you know. Good for you. I'm glad you're getting it now, such that eventually when you stand at the national level, things are different. Anyway, let's dig in into what's happening at uh, Makerere Law School. The semester opened last week. And the expectation was that we would be taught. I'm an evening student. I don't know your day or evening. I am day. I'm a day student. You're day student. Are you day Same evening? Yeah, yeah, day. Your day. So I'm the old man out. But, and, uh, but as student leaders, you benefit a lot from the evening program. As? As student leaders, mm -hmm. we benefit a lot from the day program mm. because of the nature of the work that you have to do during the day and then you have some time mm. in the evening. Okay, so the semester opened last week. And uh, we have not had class since then. We thought, all right, it's the first week. Uh, people are not eager to attend classes. Maybe lecturers, same story. This is week two, and classes are not going on. What's happening? Uh, basically, uh, Joel sits on the college administrative board, so I guess he will take us through the, the, the modalities of what's going on. But uh, the summary of the issue is that evening classes have not been taught because lecturers are protesting the absence of pay for mm. about three years now. Uh, areas that go to a tune of about 500 billion and uh, 800 million from the, the past agreements. So it's a bit tricky for them to come to class and we thought that as a leadership, if evening students are not taught, lectures should not start even for our day students. So that's, that's why we have not had class from mm. last week. Joel, I understand you folks have met with the uh school management and uh, university management, you're trying to have engagements. Mm -hmm. what, what has come through those? Yes, uh, first and foremost, uh, it must be understood that the engagement that is happening between the central management and law school management is an engagement that has been pushed for for very long, pretty mm -hmm. much I think for the greatest part of two years, and it hasn't been able to happen until yesterday. Um, what transpired yesterday was simply that um, the law school management managed to get these people on the table and um, um, show them that they're actually serious about not going back to class to teach evening students because their contract, the contract on which they work, is for eight to seven, uh, eight to eight to uh, five. eight to five, like all other laborers mm -hmm. in the country. Now, the problem with that is that uh, you know the history of the evening program. It started at law school and uh, it started as a program that was supposed to be a compromise. So the problem that they had was that uh, it should be a different contract from the contract that uh, they taught on that their program. So they have two concerns. Firstly, it's um, they had the concern of what terms are they going to teach the evening program on the basis of. And the second concern is uh, when are their arrears going to be paid. Pre-incentive, you talked about the, the incentive. The incentive mm. was uh, begun, I think, 
um, in 19, uh, no, no, not in 20, 2010, I believe. Now, pre-incentive, the position was that uh, they would be uh, remunerated with two allowances, a top-up allowance for each and every person on the, that contributed to the running of the evening program, then um, the, teaching the teaching allowance for uh, everyone that taught evening students. Now that um, allowance was subsumed into the incentive, uh, into, into the incentive, which incentive, according to the visitation committee report, was uh, said to be, and um, uh, yeah, it was uh, supposed, it was said to be, not um, uh, sustainable. So they sort of uh, recommended that it should be uh, abolished. With the abolition of incentive. Um, there was no particular term, uh, terms, there were no particular terms on which they were teaching the evening program. But it is a program on which they admit students, that's, that's what uh, uh, creates the impasse. These are students that are admitted with uh, the precondition that they're going to be taught, they pay fees to be taught, so essentially there is also that contract. So, uh, but you realize that the lecturers um, are not the ones that make the contract with the students, it is the university management which makes it the duty of the university management, which actually has a contract with both the lecturers and the students to actually find a compromise that works for all the parties. Now, th the issue that they're having is that um, they are failing to arrive at a compromise that takes them beyond the short gap measure that they had come up with, which was a peculiar allowance for the period after the incentive so that they could agree on um, uh, on uh, the terms on which they would teach the evening class for the future. So the meetings that are happening now are to determine, firstly, when they are going to get their arrears, that they are, uh, because they are arrears on even that fee that they haven't yet received, but they are also arrears, um, uh, rather, rather than just arrears, they are also looking for uh, a contract on which they are going to be taught, uh, on which mm. we are going to be taught as evening program. Well, let's wait and see how that plays out. Terima, where are your guns pointed at? Um, I've had some folks, you know, this grant told that lecturers are not teaching them, and so they are unhappy with the lecturers. Others will say, look, the lecturers have got a right to demand for pay. When somebody does a job, they ought to be remunerated for that job. And so their beef, so to call it, is pointed at the management. Who should we be looking at for answers? Okay, thank you, Joel. Uh, first, I just want to add on what Joel said. You know, the irony of this situation... I, I think for to, to avoid confusion, <laughs> we shall call him Roy. I know, I'm Joel. <laughs> for purposes of this show. <laughs> Perfect. Yeah, because uh, you say, Joel, you have said, and then, anyway, uh, but you can go on. Uh, uh, from, from what mm. Roy said, just the irony of the situation is that the last time we had an issue of this nature was in mm. 2016, November 2016, mm. which necessitated the closure of the university and then the appointment of the visitation committee. Funny enough is that the visitation committee makes a recommendation that the incentive should be abolished, but yeah. makes no recommendation as to what should be done to replace, to, to replace the incentives if they are abolished. Mm. So we have a situation where the, what was supposed to be the solution has remained part of the problem. So we have that, that issue. Problem. But then on the question you ask where our guns pointed as the leadership, our guns are pointed at management. We, are, we stand in conflict. Low school management, mm -hmm. but university, university central, management. central management. Mm. We stand in complete solidarity with our lecturers for two reasons. One, because as law students, we understand the importance <coughs> of fairness mm. and being paid for. You know, you cannot muzzle one ox. It is important that if a person works, they are paid. Secondly, some of our lecturers at the law school are some of the finest in the region. And for us, for, for the management to subject them to so many compromises, yet our evening students, who from actually the visitation committee report, evening students together with private students on the day program, contribute the bulk of tuition to, to, you know, to, the, to the university coffers. So it is, it, is, it, is, it is not acceptable for us that the central management is unable to clear areas of, of lecturers for a period of over three years, yet these evening students who pay tuition are the ones that are suffering the wrath. Mm. So our guns are pointed at management. The whole of yesterday, the leadership spent days in, uh, spent hours in uh, at main building trying to to pull a few strings here and there. And uh, I, I I guess that it is it is it is paying off in one way or another because we managed to to cause a meeting between the central management mm. and the law school administration, mm. a meeting that is really long overdue. Roy, I thought there was some autonomy of sorts um, with the college system. 
Mm. Of course, uh, law school is the only one that retained uh, school status, but, uh, well, school for a name, but college status. Yes, yes. I, I thought there's a bit of autonomy that some money is retained at that level. Uh, how is that playing out? Well, initially, the pre-incentive position was that uh, internally generated revenue was received by the colleges and uh, a, a percentage was remitted to the central management. However, um, the policy was altered to now provide that uh, central management collected all the fees mm. centrally. They centralized collection of, of uh, internally generated revenue so that now they would actually be the ones remitting some percentages to the colleges. Uh, that is one of the concerns that um, the law school administration is raising and actually saying that, well, we should be going back to this position. Central management is um, uh, raising the concern that, firstly, because of the fact that we have not revised <coughs> the fees for the entire university, mm. it becomes problematic for them to actually um, manage the university's affairs because the fees that we pay um, are only, I think, consumed in um, paying for the basics, water bills, all those things, uh, water bills, electricity, and other modalities that, uh, uh, well, they, they suggest that we pay a very, very small cost, and um, which may be a very true Do assumption. Do you agree with them when you see how much you pay? I don't know if you're a government student. I am a not a government one. student. I'm a private mm. student. And, um, so if you are to compare and contrast, say, what you pay and what private universities uh, here in this country, in the region or elsewhere? I will not only compare mm. with the private universities in mm. this country. It is um, trite knowledge now that um, Makere University pays pretty much the lowest amount of fees, I think, mm. across uh, the continent. So why then the is it that when, you know, there's um, an idea of increasing the tuition, students, uh, you know, rise We up must in understand one thing, Joel, that... Um, while it is a benevolent uh, gesture to try to um, work with the government and compromise with them, we must understand that Makere University is a public university, the mm. premier public university of the country. If this government suggests to us that we have a premier public university and actually cannot, uh, 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 cannot um, sufficiently fund this public university, there is a problem. Uh, in the board meeting yesterday, um, I think one of the members <coughs> raised a concern that we are going around in circles, but you know that the fundamental problem here is that we need to confront the leopard. You know, this is a matter that... Um, the leopard meaning the president. You, you, you know that that is now, <laughs> I think, <laughs> yeah. So um, they, there needs to be a confrontation with the people that are in charge of... Um, running a public university. This is, I think, supposedly the most important public university in the country. It, it is, I think, more widely known than most public universities in the country. I think Bulu the government... By on strike. Uh, while that might be true... No, just the, to give you a picture that you know. I understand. I understand. I understand. But it is not fair to mm. assert that you value this institution if you cannot actually come through and show that there is value in the people that are part of this institution. The stakeholders in this in institution need to be given a sense of value. This sense of value is going to be given to them if we actually take responsibility, and um, I'm speaking for the government now, that they take responsibility of an institution like this one. It is an institution mm -hmm. that they owe so much to, I believe. Uh, tell me what, the, there is not much approval from uh, the other colleges, save for mm -hmm. journalism school, which has also suspended evening yeah, classes. Yes. How come it's now just law school and uh, journalism later on that are saying, uh-uh, let's raise the red flag here. In other colleges, those that do have the evening programs, they are going on. I think for me it comes down to three issues. Uh, one is... Uh, <clears throat> there, is, uh, there, is, there is a bit of strike fatigue at Makerere mm. because the issue of lecturers' welfare is not new. It has been going on, and I was looking through the visitation report a few days ago, and it has been going on from as long as about 1990s, 92, 93. And there is a bit of strike fatigue because it doesn't seem to come up with a solution. Mm. Um, but secondly, is the issue at law school is also a bit unique. Firstly, because of the history, because it is the law school that started the evening program across the university. So, and, and secondly, it's because uh, the university has been 
having more negotiations with management at law school with this issue because of the way they started the program. So I think it's a bit a unique situation, a, a bit of a unique situation at law school. But also the other issue is that, uh, in my opinion, I think that it's there has to be someone who starts the the, the conversation. Mm. Because uh, while there might be strike fatigue, but the, the issue of fairness and, 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 and paying people what they are worth, mm. must, the conversion cannot, cannot go away. We may be tired of striking, but there, there has to be a way of resolving the issues that have remained. That's why as a leadership we have uh, actually opted for a more, what I could call a more modest option Same than what option. most students usually do. Uh, instead of going into our red gowns, hitting the streets as we have done in the, pre in the, in the in previous the years, we have asked our students that let's maybe try a boycott of day classes and it will help to exert more pressure on management. Will it? Because you see at the end of the day everybody might sit on their laurels and uh, we are not studying one week, two weeks, three weeks, yeah. business as usual, uh, there is a boycott and then what? And, 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 right, and you point out rightly because if we if this impunity that is at, at 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 the central management level is not dealt with then we cannot contain entirely the bounds of civility within which people want to operate eventually individuals will start to think within themselves what can we do for this situation and then we go back we hope that we don't go back to that situation because that's going again to ground zero it wouldn't change a lot because personally i think that violence always begets no 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 answers so the situation must be dealt with with a sense of urgency. And I'm optimistic that, uh, that by the end of this week, something, a compromise should have been struck yes. to ensure that uh, we don't have to go to a situation where people can sit up in management and say, well, let what will happen, happen. Because at the end of the day, I mean, we are the biggest students, are the biggest st stakeholders in the university. And I think the university cannot run if they cannot allow them to teach. But... I hope that we don't have to go to those to those to those to those ends. Roy, I know that you folks are going to have another meeting today at two. Yes. And I can almost prognosticate what's going to come out of that meeting if there's some kind of agreement. It will be a short term, you know, measure, a, a shot in the arm, a painkiller of sorts uh, to do away with the pain. But but the illness, the perennial illness, remains. And me, I'm more interested in how do we remedy that because the painkiller will last for what? Maybe a semester. Mm. And then symptoms will arise again. And, and we keep going round in the same vicious cycle. It's talked about since the 1992s. You know, when I was doing my first degree, I remember that university was closed. And now that I'm doing my second degree, it was closed again. At some point, I thought maybe I'm the problem. <laughs> 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 so we, we keep in the same vicious cycle. Yeah. Mm. We never prescribe ultimate remedies. And I'm interested in hearing those. So what are you guys going to propose to management? Because you want long-lasting solutions. You're in third year now. Mm. You don't want next year to get affected. You don't mm. want your little brother to get affected. Your son in the future to get affected. You want to have something that works ultimately. Yes. What is that? Now, firstly, uh, from a managerial point of view, you must appreciate that um, whether we get uh, short-term measures, uh, so short-term answers today uh, or medium-term medium answers today, the most important thing we need right now is something that gets our students back to class. I believe you want to go back to class. Without a doubt. Exactly. Now, that becomes a very important consideration. If something gets us back to class, whether it's a short gap measure or a long But I don't want measure, to go back to class for important. two weeks and then there's an, I want yes. something sustainable. Of yes. one semester, then I'm on my tent hooks next semester. Ha. Mm. So what's going to happen? Now, uh -huh. now, the understanding that there is between the central management and uh, I think not just the law school administration but also other units, is that there is going to be a meeting on the 15th of February mm. that discusses the future because the meeting that we have today in no way can uh, n uh, include all the negotiations as to, for instance, the rates on which they are actually going to teach evening class hours for the future. I think the most important thing that we can achieve out of today is um, a compromise on um, the the, the, the areas, what can the university actually afford to pay the lecturers. I believe that we are making headway in that uh, direction because I think the, 
for the time being for them to go back to class they have agreed to certain um, terms certain compromises that are way below the, what they had actually asked for in the in, in the past so uh, it, it is not uh, at my liberty to actually disclose all the details of that negotiation maybe they may uh, affect the negotiations adversely but we must understand that uh, the progress that we are having, that we may have today, can't be the long-term progress. The long-term progress has to be discussed in light, with the, in, in light of the fact that this is a, prog a problem that uh, stretches across all the units. It's a problem that must be discussed by all the, uh, the, the, the different faculties at uh, Makere University. And all these faculties need to contribute to this discussion. Uh, it is the good thing about this is that they have gotten the opportunity to actually start the conversation. 15th February offers them the option to actually renegotiate the terms and then, you know, bring out how many working hours, what, what the rates are, are going to be and everything. So I think there is hope that the measures that they're going to take this time are going to be better suited to actually mm. deal with the problem in the, in long, in the long run. Tell me, you've looked at the Visitation uh, Committee report. Yes, mm. You have seen what it diagnoses as the problems and what it does... You know, Adam Wright has recommendations, things that should be done. One, do you believe them? Do you believe they are solid recommendations that will, you know, help us to see light at the end of the tunnel? But two, and more importantly, do you see these being carried forth and taken action on? Because it's not the first probe we have had. There was the Omaswa one mm -hmm. and several others, and many of them keep saying pretty much the same stuff, you know. But, uh, yeah, here we are, back to ground zero, as you call it. Um, some of the recommendations in the visitation committee report needs uh, some revision, in my mm. opinion. What are those? I, I think, for example, when they, they recommend that uh, we should be paying at a uniform rate with other universities in the region, while it is uh, a novel idea mm. and it, it is premised on, on facts, the, also, the other sad truth is that um, the cost of education in this country is becoming increasingly higher, but low in quality. Mm. So the value for money will not be the same as a person paying the same, you know, amount in perhaps in maybe in the in the University of Cape Town. But uh, number two, I think that there are some recommendations which should be there are some recommendations which should be carried forth. Mm. Um, but I doubt the political will to to do that. But if I may just digress from the question and, and add on a bit on what Joel was saying on the permanent solution. Mm. You talked about the idea of centralization of, uh, of funding. I, I think that the university needs to revise the, the, the idea of where does the tuition we pay go. D should it go straight to central management or should the colleges have an account where they can keep money, where they can handle their college issues? Okay. I think for me it does a great deal in solving this problem. Um, I, I think permanently because... Do you, do you see mismanagement between tuition has been paid by you and I and then it goes to the, the other side and then part fund. of it trickles back to say law school in that this case? I sense. see a lot of mismanagement and mm. the visitation committee report will also clarify, will also show you that idea that, that look, there is a lot of money that is sent to the central management but there is very little accountability that mm. comes from central management. Let me tell you Joel, in my tenure of office as a president we have had to ask the custodian for things like uh, new lights and benches, and all that money has to be picked from main building. Mm. And, and for me, I can't understand how even m amounts like 50,000 cannot be... That should be petty cash yeah, in that's, the yeah, of it should an be. office, a company. So I, I cannot understand how, why the central management should want to continue having a monopoly mm. over funding, mm. yet they cannot be able to pay the lecturers at a college level. And I think that if they would be, be able to do that, the principal and the, the administration would be then answerable to us. We wouldn't be having a, a situation where now we are dealing with, with management. Right now it would be an internal issue dealing with the principal and seeing what goes on. But in that event, we perhaps we wouldn't even have the issue. So I think part of the solution is decentralizing funding. Mm. And one, one that is even closest to my heart is uh, the, the exorbitant amounts given to people like in the Guild government. A budget of about $260 million, but all they have to show it for like this year is dustbins. So nothing done but law society or other college, uh, college associations start with the budget of zero. So I, I, I think there needs to be a decentralization process of funding mm. from tuition to students' uh, affairs um, monies and everything that is connected so that there is a fair balance of how much we can spend at college level and how much we can spend at university level.
Roy, I know you engage with students oftentimes because you are their representative. What are they telling you? Yeah, um, students are in a dilemma, I must say. Students would like to, um, you know, help their lecturers out and, uh, you know, increase the pressure on management and get answers for their lecturers and for themselves. However, they find that they are being made victims for uh, something that they shouldn't be even part of, really. Uh, they believe that this conversation should be going on between the management and um, the lecturers, but that they should be actually going to class, meanwhile. Because their biggest concern is we must be studying and we must be studying together because um, the position of law school administration is simply that we're going to be teaching the day classes and uh, the evening class uh, will be taught if we are paid. So the idea is that we need to start being taught at the same time because we are going to be examined at the same time and we're going to be examined on the same content. The students believe that if the day, school, uh, the day classes uh, continue without uh, the evening classes, it will create a fundamental problem in the examination because you will have, for instance, you're on the evening program, you will have very little time to engage with what you're studying. You'll have very little time to engage with uh, the lecturers. The value for money cannot be the same if you are being compared to me who started, if um, I were to go by the book, I would have started studying this week at least. So it doesn't make sense that uh, they are being made victims of what is not their problem. Now, uh, regarding the uh, visitation committee recommendations, there are very many uh, recommendations in that report that uh, people feel are not exactly um, very guided recommendations. Recommendations that you move, uh, for instance, certain colleges uh, from um, Makere University to other universities don't make any sense with respect to the um, very learned gentlemen that, and ladies that uh, came up with that report. Uh, suggesting that the public university, that is Makere University, cannot handle its numbers and therefore we should send the numbers to other public universities uh, is very problematic and it defeats logic really. Uh, if Makere does not have the facilities to handle these students, <laughs> does Chambogo University have the facilities to handle the biggest college in Makere University? It doesn't make sense. Um, they also suggest that, um, you know, uh, the irony is that um, central management usually raises the concern that numbers are dwindling owing to certain other factors, and that is one of the reasons why we cannot collect revenue enough to sustain ourselves. And... Um, that becomes are they actually dwindling. I thought mm -hmm. there's more people that enroll no, at Makere. The, 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 the numbers are actually reducing. Mm. So, and uh, for people that are claiming that n they do not need numbers, uh, that rather they need numbers to increase for them to run, it is ironic that <laughs> they are being told to actually transfer some of the numbers to other institutions. However, on the matter of um, um, tuition and uh, value for money, and uh, I, I would like to differ a bit from what my brother Taremwa would uh, like to have us believe. The quality um, that the people at Cape Town are able to actually receive, uh, he used a uh, case study of Cape Town, is because they are actually paying to receive this quality. Uh, I, I believe that uh, if there was indeed a revision of um, our fee structure, and uh, of course subject to the fact that this is a public university, a revision, an equitable revision that does not, you know, take away the essence of having a public university. We would have better quality because we're actually paying for better quality. But before such a revision can happen, there must be a guarantee that the management of these funds will be better than it is currently. Because it's very difficult to convince anyone that already there is so much mistrust you know, you cannot actually, it is very difficult for someone to be convinced that you're going to send their money to central management. It comes back to them and they believe that this money is not going to, I think 60% of this money is not going to be cut. So they must first deal with the internal manage, man, managerial problems that they have in there for them to actually convince us that we can have a revision because a revision is imminent if we are to actually deal with these problems. I'm going to wrap this up, but as we do, Tarema, what, what do you tell students like me? Uh, for whom you are president, who are looking to you and saying, uh, we need some answers, uh, <laughs> you're engaging with these folks, mm. what, what's going to happen? So as things are now, what are you telling us? Um, number one, 
uh, to all law students who I, I, I am so privileged to lead. We pay so much money for this program. We pay perhaps, I think, School of uh, uh, College of Engineering and Medicine. We are perhaps the hugest contributors to, to, the, to the tuition. So we pay so much money and uh, we must get services for what we pay. Uh, number two, evening students, our boycott of day classes, which the leadership has called for, enters day two today, mm. and it continues. Evening day? Day. Mm -hmm. day because classes. evening, they won't teach. Mm. But day, they want to teach. But we, as a leadership, we say we are boycotting classes, and we are encouraging all day students to boycott classes on mm. the day program until we can manage to have a solution to the evening class issue. So to all evening students, we will not be going to class. We shall show our solidarity with you until this issue is put out of the way. The idea is that we are examined on the same content mm. because we have had the same contact hours with lecturers. And number three, and most importantly, I encourage the management and the government and all other stakeholders, there needs to be finality to this issue. We cannot keep going back to the same problem. One of the things that uh, we propose in our, in our petition to the vice chancellor, which we handed in yesterday, uh, really a letter to the vice chancellor, is one of the things we propose is there must be a meeting with all stakeholders to discuss how we can bring a final issue to this, one, to this, to this idea. But for me, I also encourage that management revises its, its fee structure because if law school pays 1.2 million for tuition, and another college, I, I won't name the specifics, but other colleges pay a paltry 500,000, 700,000 for tuition. For the se we, we compete for the same services in the university except, the, quali uh, except the, the names and individuals of lecturers. But we use the same water, use the same electricity, use the same other amenities. So why should we pay 1.2 and people pay almost half of what we pay? So I think there needs to be a revision even on the fee structure of other colleges. But to all students of uh, Makere Law Society, we stand with you in this issue because we are students first and leaders second. And uh, our lecturers, we know that our f the fault is not with them, but with management, we are, we are not going to stop. We are not going to relent. Yesterday, we cordoned off uh, the leadership uh, practically crippled work at the vice chancellor's office, and that shall continue until there is a final idea and final answer to this problem. Okay. Hopefully we'll get to see a proper end to this. Kansi Memukama Teremwa and uh, Joel Roy Muchunguzi, thank you for talking to us. Keep representing us. We are behind you. If you need <laughs> us to come with red gowns, <laughs> we will call up. We hope we don't. Well, do well, well. We'll I call. certainly hope we don't yeah, because, you know, we then retrogress. Yeah. I don't see the sense yeah, yes. in let's destroy property, you know, yes. ban people's cars just because we want to study. Uh -uh. We are paying tuition. Can we study? That's the big story for today. Thank you for joining us. My name is Joel Senyonyi. Good morning.